Welcome to another Electronics on the Floor, where I'll talk about switches. There's all different types. Having the right type of switch can make your radio project easier to build and better to use. Generally speaking, the price of active components has gone down, but hardware like enclosures and switches has gone up. So if you find switches at the right price, then it's worthwhile to grab them. But before you can do that, you need to know the different types of switches available and where they can be useful in different radio projects. In this video, I'll go through this box of switches and talk about their different types. One tip I suggest if you're seriously looking for switches, like at a ham fest and they're unmarked, is to bring your own multimeter or audible continuity indicator. That way you can test switches, for instance, to see if they're momentary or push on and push off. That way you can test switches and even to see what type they are, like if they're push on, push off or just momentary. Here's our box of switches and I'll go through some of the more significant types. Well, the first thing, this isn't actually a switch at all, just a weatherproof hood that screws onto some toggle switches. I say some because the screw thread may be different, which is another thing. With switches, make sure you get the nut to go with it. There's all different types of thread, and there's nothing worse than having a switch, but not the nut. But just in case you forget, make sure you also collect hardware, nuts, bolts, etc, as that can make building projects so much easier. This is our first switch. There are six connections on the back. The center pin is normally the common, and normally, but not always, when the toggle handle is that way, it's actually these two pins that are shorted. So in this case, those two, that's connected to that, and this connected to this. And then when we move the actuator that way, then the center pin is common and it connects with this one, which my index finger is pointing to. Oh, and another thing with switches, which is a bit of a trick, if you want to use a double pole, double throw switch to reverse polarity for something, then you just connect this connection to that with a short length of wire and this connection to that. Then you apply your supply to these two, negative and positive, and if you were to connect your circuit here, you'll find that when you flick the switch, you don't turn it on and off like you would with a normal switch, but you reverse the polarity. That could be useful in certain specialized circuits. Now here's a big switch, possibly mains rated. It's got much bigger terminals. Although when you look at it, normally on the bottom of switches, it tells you the voltage and current rating. Some switches also have a neon or other light in them. In fact, it's probably hard to see, but just near my thumb looks like a neon light or similar. So with this sort of switch, you could have it so that when it's switched on, the switch glows. Or maybe the switch glows all the time. I don't know, I haven't connected this one up but it looks like that the neon is across these two pins here. This is another double pole, double throw switch. Looks a bit like a light switch. Just looking at the fine print, which you probably can't see. 125 volts at, I think it's 10 amps. Here's a big cheerful red button. It's got a click. Now, that may mean that it's push on and push off rather than being a momentary switch, but you can't really tell until you get out the multimeter and just test across these two pins. Now, these types of switches are probably amongst the cheapest. The slide type switches, double pole, double throw, it's a little bit bigger than normal. I still wouldn't use something like this for mains or high current DC, but for most general purpose type, low voltage, low current type switching, it would be fine. 
Um, the main awkward thing about them is that when you are mounting them behind a panel, you don't just drill a round hole, but you have to cut out a square hole. So you might need to drill several holes and use some small files to cut out a rectangular hole. But there is the two holes here which you can use for screws and some of these switches are threaded in here so you don't need a nut on the back of them. Just go through your screw collection and get one that fits in snugly and doesn't strip the thread. Now this is an interesting one. It's really hard to work out what it actually does without a multimeter but it's a multi-position switch. That could be useful if you're switching a lot of things like, say, coils and capacitors for a multiband receiver project. One thing to bear in mind with these switches is that they're fine for DC, but for RF, then there can be capacitance between the connections and that can cause the performance on RF to be spoilt. So, particularly on VHF and UHF, you wouldn't be using a switch like this to be switching RF signals. But it might be okay for a simple, cheap HF receiver project. Now here, here's an interesting one. It looks like it's a momentary switch. Could use it for, say, up and down frequency or band selections in a transceiver. This is about the simplest switch you can get, just two contacts, and it's fairly hefty. One twenty-five volt, three amps. The Americans might use something like this as the power switch to an appliance. However, it's not really very good practice because you'd only be switching the active lead better practice in main switching is to switch both the active and the neutral connections in which case you'd need a double pole double throw type switch. So that would have at least four and possibly six connections. This is another slide switch. It's only got two positions and normally a two position switch would have three or six connections on the back but there's a lot more than that in fact, it looks like it's 12. So that very likely means that there would be four switches in this, all controlled by this lever. But you don't know 100% for sure until you test it with a multimeter. Because there are different switch configurations, like there's switches that short out rather than open, um, and all sorts of things like that. And I haven't even gone into rotary switches, that's a whole other topic. Another double pole double throw switch looks to be quite heavily built. With the heat shrink tubing over the contacts, it may have been used to switch main supply. That's what I haven't spoken about much yet. This switch is normally closed because the contacts are meeting. Unless there's pressure applied like that, in which case the switch opens. Normally closed versus normally open is something that we talk about for push button switches, which I'll get to in a moment. Just a slide switch. Again, looks like double pole, double throw. Looks like a momentary switch. Well this switch looks a bit unusual, but all it is is just a double pole double throw switch, but the connections are at right angles. So this would be good for if you're mounting in a circuit board that goes across there. This will then line up with the hole in the front panel. You'll notice there's no thread on the front of this switch. Now these are push button switches. Only two contacts. They can't take very much current at all. If you are switching high power electrics, you might use this to drive a switching transistor or relay, which can then handle the higher current. 
some of these types of switches are normally closed that is if you measure across with a multimeter you get continuity even if you're not touching the actuator although it's a little bit more common for switches to be normally open i.e. no circuit when I'm not touching the button there is a short when I'm pressing in this is a rotary switch which is snuck in it looks a lot like the push button switches you sometimes saw on lamps and things but it's rotary on and off and it looks like it fits an imperial type of knob 250 volt 3 amp so it would work for a mains rated but fairly low power project another double pole double throw switch fairly hefty something like this should be okay for a mains rated project and note that you can switch both active and neutral which is the best way to go nothing special about this switch it's just single pole double throw single pole means that there's just one pole that's been switched and double throw means that it can go two ways in other words when it's like that it connects these two and when it's like that it connects those two there is such a thing as single pole single throw and all that would be would be if there are only two connections on the back so you could either short them out closed or open them up and they're just two connections not the third something like this is very small and light could be useful for qrp projects when there's no room to put in a bigger switch this is a tiny little switch it could be useful for something like a push to talk on a microphone the actions of some switches are even good enough to send morse code but you probably won't be able to send all that fast another slide switch quite tough and possibly a bit harder to mount and you also need a rectangular hole common in 1970s stereo type equipment as is something like this switches are interesting components they range from very cheap to very expensive but having the right one can greatly simplify your project if there's others I haven't covered then please mention them in the comments below.